Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 27th May, 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader of Superior Profit. I will not take time to introduce myself. However, if you want to know more about myself, about the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help it in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and then click on the about us menu before we begin let us go through the standard disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on superior profits trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading past performance is no guarantee of future return Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will use Q technical analysis to review oil, gold, India Nifty future and few forex pairs. We'll also look at SPY QQQ DIA for USA market using Q technical charts. And then we will go and study broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis through key graphs and ranking table. We may go through some of the trades posted in traders community. However, more than that, this week we would like to use our visual fundamental analysis tool that we are calling Q Vital to look at some stocks in certain industries that we identify from top down analysis. We may look at distiller ventilars, which has declined this week, which was one of the strongest performers last week and see if we have any tradable opportunities in distillers and ventilars group. Also, I welcome all of you. If you are into long term investing or you would like to see whether the stocks you are buying are fundamentally strong or not, you can give me the ticker code and I will explain how using Q Vital in less than five minutes we can find out which stocks are strong and which are not so strong using visual analysis. Q&A is throughout the session. You may use the Q&A panel to ask questions. I'll try to answer them as I go along. That was the last PowerPoint of our class. So let's move to live system. Let's start with US oil. Last week, we had discussed that we will wait for US oil to go up and then either till down from the memory resistance line or might be from the yellow slow direction line. US oil went somewhere in between and declined from there. It is in a downtrend with lower low and lower high. On Thursday, when it dropped significantly, it gave a kind of go with flow short trade signal. Except that Thursday's candle was very large, so the drop was large and the stop loss would be very far away. Therefore, at the end of Thursday, we will not be initiating any short trade at this price level. On Thursday, if we entered any trade, our entry price at end of day will be at this price point. Potential profit target will be at the lower boundary. Stop may be just above this memory resistance line. So risk is larger than reward. Instead of doing that, if one was tracking US oil, then on Thursday as market open using Q real-time fine-tuned chart, one could have initiated the trade as price went below early range low. And let us look at that now. 
the Q real time fine tune chart as of Thursday. This is looking at same US oil using five minute fine tune chart. Soon after market open, the early range high and early range low were formed. Because we were looking for short trade, even if price tried to go above early range high, we wouldn't be taking any long trade. Instead, we will be waiting for price to go below early range low. It tried to go below early range low on this candle. However, it had a lower tail. So we will be waiting for price to go below that level. One could initiate a short trade at that price point. Other way, one could wait for price to come up give a swing high and till down like on this yellow candle which is more bearish shape without any lower tail and initiate the shot at that point in either case the stop loss will be at early range high in this case price tried to go little above that so stop loss will be just above days high at this price point our entry price would be either at this level or this level. The risk amount will be this distance. And once the risk distance is covered, one could start booking profit, putting a stop loss so that the entire trade is risk free from that time onward. Eventually, US oil fell much more. So at the end of the day, if one was day trading, position would be closed at that point. And if it was a precision entry of swing trading, then one could hold partial position overnight. Next day, Friday, there are multiple ways that the trade could be managed. If somebody was swing trading, then now the stop will be moved to swing trade stop using daily chart. And that stop would not be violated the trader would still be holding US oil short on partial position at the end of the day. Now there is a concept of two day trading where a trader enters the trade on the first day, books some profit, holds partial position overnight and tries to gain further profit next day. How that trade could be managed next day is that Wait for the day to begin, wait for the early range high and early range low to be formed. And it is a short trade. After early range lines are formed, if price continue to go down, then the trader will hold the position which stop above early range high and see if the price goes down more and more giving higher profit. However, if the instrument went above early range high, then he will stop out just at that point. So in this case, if it was being managed as a two day trade, then the trader will exit the remaining position at the end of this green candle. Thereby taking a chance of higher profit in case the instrument fell down, protecting profit if the price went up. This is for two day trade for a short position. Similar technique could be applied for two-day long position. If we go back to daily chart, right now, US oil is bearish at the right-hand side, but we will not be taking any trade right now. One possibility is that it slightly tries to go back up and come down. Then we may enter a short trade. Now, one thing to note that the weekly candle color is cyan. So strictly speaking, there is no go with flow short trade setup. The standard trade setup, all the checklists are not being met. Therefore, if somebody is taking short trade, one has to be extra cautious. And I suggest taking short trade in such cases only if you are following the instrument regularly because all the standard checklist conditions are not being met. Let's look at gold. US oil came down, but gold didn't. Gold moved sideways for a few days, and on Friday, it gapped up, closed with an indecisive candle, 
but with a significant higher price than Thursday's close. At the right edge of the chart, price is extended overbought as seen by the green dot on the top of the candle. So we will not be taking any long position. It is overbought. It is already near upper boundary. We will not be taking any short trade. Both daily and weekly charts are bullish. Our next trade opportunity might come if gold continue to go up, up to this memory resistance line and tilts down from there. Probably by the time price will go to the weekly memory resistance as well, somewhere around 120 to 122. An alert trader could use that price point for a precision entry of a day trade in the short direction or a swing trade entry using fine tune real time chart. For a bounce trade setup, we need to have high activity, very high activity on that day. So we may watch out for that. Right now, we don't have any standard Q trade setup at the right edge of GLD. Let's look at India's Nifty market. In the last class, we had discussed that if price came to the upper boundary and tilted down, we might have an opportunity to enter a short trend. The bear release signal had come, but it didn't have very high activity. And also the bear release signal is to be used only in case of sideways movement, not for trending movement. In this case, Nifty futures of India market, broad market Nifty futures was in uptrend. So the bear release signal is not to be taken for any short position. It could be used to protect any long position if one was holding by tightening stop or exiting the position but there was no trade entry at this point in short direction. On Thursday, we had a cyan candle in daily chart. I think the weekly was also bullish. So it was meeting the conditions of go with flow long position, except that price was already too high, closer to the upper boundary. The stop loss was a bit far. So our entry point at end of day would be at the close of price. Stop will be just below recent low. Profit target will be at upper boundary. The potential reward will be small relative to potential risk. And one would not take that swing trade. However, looking at the bullish condition on Friday, using real-time fine-tune chart, one could initiate a day trade in the long direction. Let us look at the fine tune chart for Nifty now. On Friday, market opened at this blue color level. Sorry, I think the time, time setting is not correct. We don't need any parameter to be set in Q system. However, if we are trading in different markets, which have different session start and end time, and which has different benchmark indices. We just need to set those two parameters. So I have created shortcuts for those. So I just set it for India market. So this is proper time. It is starting at 9.15 a.m. So soon after market open, the early range high and the early range low was formed. Early range low is coinciding with days open. So after open, price couldn't go below that price at all. Based on the at a glance, weekly and daily chart, we were looking for only long trade as day trade. That happened on, on this green candle. Price tried to go up, but it closed with an upper tail, so we will not be entering any long on this candle. Next candle went down, and the one after that ended with a green color closing above the early range high. So we may enter the trade on the next green candle just as price was going up. Our stop loss will be at early range low. Entry price will be somewhere here. 
our risk distance will be the distance between entry price and stop loss and once that profit target was hit which would be around this level we will start booking profit which happened pretty close to the market end so in this case keeping in mind that weekend is coming one might close the entire position this was again another example of how we use the at a glance weekly daily chart to decide on a trade's direction and use Q fine tune real time chart to actually enter the trade with small stop loss, book some profit, and sometimes hold remaining position overnight to let profit run. Let's look at some forex pairs. Sing dollar. In the last class, we had discussed that from the sideways narrow range around white very slow direction line we were waiting for price to go up then till down on this bear release day which also created a false upside breakout so we'll be taking a short swing trade on that day stop will be just above memory high entry point will be at the close of the day we may start booking profit once the risk distance is covered in this case the white very slow direction line was there so partial profit could be booked when price touched there remaining position could be held and it may still be held until now it has already hit the lower boundary the next support is at the memory support line on monday or tuesday if price hits the memory support line then some more profit could be booked so this was a profitable swing trade we always try to see at the right edge there is any trade or not at the right edge of the chart sing dollar is already overextended oversold shown by the red dot below the candle so we will not be initiating any short swing trade right now and it is clearly in downtrend bearish so we will not be taking any long trade either our next trade opportunity could come if price it's the memory support line and tilts up from there. An alert trader could use the memory bounds to initiate a trade using Q fine tune real time chart. Okay, now we look at Australian dollar. In last week, we had discussed that there was a memory line going down. And every time price was coming to the memory line, it was declining from there that gave rise to some very profitable swing as well as day trades last class we had discussed that if price again tilts down from that memory line we may initiate a short position we had also discussed that if it breaks above the line we will not enter a trade but we will wait for it to tilt down and then go back up to give us a proper go with flow long trade opportunity the memory line was broken that's why the longer memory line is not there anymore price went above the memory line breaking that it has come down but it has not gone up yet if it goes up now it may give us a go with the long trade opportunity we'll have to see if the weekly chart conditions are also met for go with flow long the weekly chart condition is that the candle color has to be cyan or bullish the other possibility was if price tilts down from the memory line the memory was broken then eventually on thursday it tilted down but it was not giving any go with flow short trade opportunity yet because the candle flow color didn't turn magenta and also the weekly candle backdrop color didn't turn magenta so there was no swing trade opportunity in Aussie dollar on Thursday only an alert trader could use real-time chart to enter a day trade as price was tilting down from two of the direction lines white and yellow day trade opportunities could be found using that but there was no swing trade opportunity in the short duration. 
at the right edge of the chart on friday aussie dollar closed with long lower tail that is bullish shape but the color is red traffic light color is red which is bearish the weekly candle is indecisive so there is no trade as of friday's close let's look at gbp usd gbp usd was moving sideways in narrow range for a while so we will not be taking any trade there at the right edge it broke below two memory lines that is bearish it is close to the yellow slow direction line but there is no standard trade setup in gbp usd right now it was moving in narrow range so there was no go with flow trade opportunity and it didn't have deep valley among the peaks to let us take a sideways trade also also when the bear release signal came the candle shape was very indecisive both with long upper tail and lower tail so we couldn't use that to take any box short trade setup as well at the right edge of the chart it broke through memory resistance there is a bearish headwind in weekly the backdrop candle color in weekly is bearish also so it may fall down or it may try to go up and fall down but there is no q standard trade setup right now in gbp usd let's move to usa market let's look at spy qqq and dia starting with spy spy reversed almost in straight line after this one day drop recovered all the loss of this large magenta gap down day and went up above the watermark resistance line in weekly also price went above the watermark resistance level it is overbought both in weekly also in daily at the right edge it is overbought in daily close to the upper boundary line so we will not be taking any long trade and because it is bullish we are not going to take any short trade either next week if price comes below this watermark resistance level and gives us a bear release signal then we might try to take a short trade provided weekly also allows us to take that kind of trade so at minimum the weekly candle color backdrop color need to turn to yellow to allow us to take such a box short trade using false upside breakout one thing to notice that though spy went up quite strongly in terms of price if you see the activity of the last 5 days friday is almost invisible thursday small wednesday small tuesday almost invisible monday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you can see the activity of the last 5 days is abysmally small as if the bigger players are not buying somebody is just luring smaller traders to buy as very slowly market is going up the activity doesn't show any indication that big players are buying and that is visible from the weekly chart also last week spy declined and see the activity is much higher whereas this week spy went back up recovered the entire loss and gained some more but the activity is ridiculously small and similar activity pattern is visible in dia and qqq also let's look at dia here the price move is similar all the decline of this large magenta candle was recovered and price went back up in this case also above the memory resistance line though less decisively than in case of spy it is overbought in the daily chart in weekly it is not overbought yet 
in weekly it has not been able to break the all time high in terms of activity we see again that daily activities are relatively smaller than last week and that is clear in the weekly chart as well last week's decline was with much higher activity than this week's activity qqq had been stronger than spy and dia that continues this week as well it made another all time high this week last week there was a bearish headwind signal with an indecisive candle today price could go above last week's high there was a bearish headwind in daily also again like in spy dia the entire loss of last week was made up at the right edge price is overbought both in daily and weekly again we can see this week went up but with very low volume compared to last week's volume let's look at broad market sector and industry analysis and there also we will see a pattern that doesn't give confidence on the bullish nature of the market now one thing i always mention that it is not time to short instruments yet because finally whether internals are weak whether activity is showing that big players are not buying we make money only if price goes up or down and in this case the broad market is going up if it is going up it is difficult to make money by shorting instruments we just keep this information in mind and when the market actually starts dropping then we may be shorting more confidently every week we look at broad market internals using nasdaq composite index on the left hand side and nyse composite index on the right hand side both using weekly chart and we look at three pairs of internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume by looking at the internals sometimes it gives us information that is not available from the indices alone if we look at nyac it continues to move in a narrow sideways range in the weekly chart and nasdaq continues to move upward nyac closed just inside the memory resistance line the automatically drawn trend line it closed with a hollow body with a small upper tail looking at the internal they are out of sync with the index movement again the new high low went up for both nasdaq and nyse however all the other four internals declined so this pattern we are observing for many weeks that when the market goes up it is going up because certain stocks are making new highs the depth is not there in the market majority of the stocks are actually declining and they are declining with higher volume volume being indicated by this up down volume and the number of stocks going up down is indicated by this advanced decline so majority of stocks are declining both in nasdaq and nyse they are declining with higher volume and the fact that the market is going up especially nasdaq is because certain stocks much less number of stocks few stocks are going up making new high so this doesn't show that the large participants are bullish on the whole market only certain stocks seem to be going up so we need to be cautious if we are long we need to be long only on those few stocks which are continuing to go up not the majority because they are continuing to go down now if we look at sector performance we look at 10 sectors every week across three review periods red bar indicating performance over last 5 days blue bar over 5 days prior to that green bar 10 days prior to blue bar together they constitute 20 days or about one month's performance we can see in this week most of the sectors ended positive shown by the red bars coming to the right side of the graph 
telecom continued decline from previous week the blue bar was on the left side and red bar is also on the left side so it continued decline from previous week and actually across all the three review periods it is declining energy had a big drop this week we saw that in us oil also last week it gained a little but this week it declined much more than that basic materials increased last week it had a loss this week it had a gain in last week's market roundup we had started looking for bottom fishing opportunities let's look at industry groups we are now looking at the best performing industries in this week we see that railroad airline and industrial transportation these three transportation related industries gained interestingly railroad was among the worst performers in the previous week so railroad showed flip flop turning from negative to positive tobacco is in the best performers list for the second week in a row last week also tobacco was one of the best performers so we could use that information to enter long trade provided q chart had a proper setup on tobacco stocks from last week basic materials gain in reflected in the gain of the aluminum companies so right now if we are going to take long in aluminum companies that is fine but we would avoid taking any short toys and laser goods are among the best performers this week but both of these were among the biggest rank decliners previous week so again toys and laser goods are displaying flip flop couple of months ago we were seeing this flip flop happening every week last 3 weeks or so the flip flop reduced but this week the flip flop that is an industry going up one week going down next week has returned if we look at the worst performing industries of this week the rout in oil commodity is reflected that in the decline of five industries oil equipment and services oil equipment services and distribution exploration production oil and gas and oil and gas producers other than that if you were noticing home depot and lo two of the largest companies in home improvement retailers both declined resulting in decline of the industry as a whole heavy construction which may be related to housing as well also declined distillers and vintilers they were among the top performers last week another case of flip flop turning from positive to negative every week we also look at the biggest ranked improver and decliners in this week we see these four of the biggest ranked improving industries were among the worst performers in previous week that is for tire footwear paper and forestry paper this is showing the flip flop again industrial transportation is the only industry that is in the best performing group this week and also in the best ranked improving group in this industry group industrial transportation we may look for only long position either swing trade or day trade and lastly the biggest ranked decliners flip flop visible again reversing from previous week trend several rate and housing related industries declined this one rate hotel and lodging specialty rate industrial office rate real estate investment trust real estate also there are many rates that declined this week whereas last week many of the rates were going up home construction declined as well so there are lots of flip flops visible in the market we saw in terms of broad market internals that only few stocks making new high probably very large companies like netflix etc moving the market higher however majority of the stocks are going down and going down with higher volume in terms of the etfs we saw that the qqq went up spy also went up however the activity was abysmally small 
all of these the ETF activity pattern, the broad market internals, and the industry flip flops are not giving much confidence on the strength of the up move. Now, let us look at the special topic of this week. We saw that distillers and ventilers had a flip flop. They were among the best performing last week, but they turned down this week. How can we benefit from that? If we look at the sector industry analysis and search for distiller, on a monthly time frame, we see that it is still bullish. It is gradually improving rank from 30 on the right hand side over last six month period to six in the current one month period. However, if we saw at a weekly time frame, distillers and vintners, they declined this week, as we saw from the industry graph. So if that is the case, let us see how we can combine technical fundamental analysis with this industry analysis to locate potential stock opportunities. For that, first we need to get a list of distillers and vintners. Some of you may know them, but I don't always know them. So I go to icon, go to the industry app, then I search on distillers and vintners or distillers and wineries industry group. I'm doing it currently for US market, but you could do it for any other country as well. Then icon shows me the list of all the stocks that belongs to this industry group. We can see that it has found 20 companies. However, out of that, we see that many of the companies have very little daily volume. So we are not interested in those. So let me filter those out. Let us try to take stocks having at least 300,000 shares per day. That is trading volume. So we came up with these companies, all of them having more than 300,000 shares average trading volume. Now we look at the price. Many of them are actually having zero price. We have only two that are non-zero. That is STZ and BFB. So we need to look at only these two companies. STZ, BFB. So this is how first I look at the industry analysis to see which industry is weak and which industry is strong. Then try to find out stocks in that industry. Last step will be to look at the company's technical chart using Q chart and then fundamental analysis using Q vita BFB.M. So this stock, let's analyze looking at, at a glance template. Weekly chart on the left hand side, daily chart on the right hand side, daily chart using hop on template, weekly chart using backdrop template. We see that price was moving sideways, creating some false upside breakout in the weekly chart. And then one week earlier, it broke above the watermark resistance level. And in this week, it tried to go up strongly, came down, again giving us a false upside breakout. Looking at the daily chart, we see the pattern in more detail. It went up strongly with a big gap up on this green candle, jumping from somewhere around 47.75 to 51.25 around that, only to give back all the profit in next couple of days. So these are very random stocks. So we don't like to trade them. So we will not be taking any trade in this stock. It has a false upside breakout. But if we thought about taking a short trade, our stop will be very, very far away. So we will not be taking any trade in this stock. Let's look at the other company that is STZ. STZ was moving inside this watermark resistance level and eventually it broke out of that in the weekly chart. This week it ended the week 
with an indecisive candle both in terms of backdrop color neutral yellow and also with long upper tail and long lower tail so it is indecisive candle it is overbought in the weekly chart in the daily chart it displayed a bearish headwind traffic light turned bearish it made a lower low and we may now wait for it to make a lower high and till down from there probably giving us a potential short go with flow short at almost the very high of the price we can see from the color of the headwind that it is at pendulum high if it is magenta then it is at pendulum high if the headwind signal is red then it is not at pendulum high so it is at pendulum high that may give us a short opportunity at the very top so we started with industry group we tried to find short opportunity in distillers and vintners we found stz to be one stock which is liquid enough and which may be giving us a short opportunity in coming days now before shorting we would also like to look at the fundamentals if we are doing short term trading it is not important our short term swing trade closes on average within five days fundamentals of companies don't change week to week so for short term swing trading we don't need to look at it and certainly not for day trading but if we are planning to short it and hold it for longer period either as stock trade or as longer term put option trade or longer term vertical trade then we may look at the fundamental of this company and see which one is weaker is this the weakest in the industry group or is there another stock in distillers and vintners that is weaker than stc now sometimes people do analysis for weeks or months to find that out but now we have developed a tool which relies on the data from zenith that is thomson reuters icon and presents the data to us helping us make the decision within less than five minutes so let's do that first what i did is i extracted the data from thomson reuters into excel these are the symbols that we just show that is from the industry app here so we can select all the symbols by clicking on this checkbox and then click on this excel symbol yeah if we click this the data will be extracted into excel we could do the filtering using these columns as well or we can do that using the excel so in the excel again we could do the same filtering we could see that for many of the stocks the average daily volume was low so we are going to exclude that for many of them we also saw that price is zero so we were going to exclude that also so that will give us some of the companies very few actually three or four all we need to do is cut and paste those symbols into q vital for price close i am going to ignore the very low price stocks or penny stocks remove everything below two dollar price and let's remove at least this four with very low activity even this is very low so we have three remain three or two remain two remain stc bfbn so same data that we saw from filtering on industry app directly so now we want to see which one of these two are stronger this is the q vital tool it will be released soon it has not been released yet in the store there are multiple ways the tool may be used here i already have the name of the stocks so i don't need to enter 
a stock to search its peers. I just want to enter the name of the stock directly. The names were BFB, BFB.n and STC.n. Well, we could just copy from here, come here and paste the value. So we can see here it shows it is retrieving data. So it is going to Thomson Reuters icon, getting the data for these two companies and doing a lot of calculations. And now it has been updated. This is the Eastern Standard Time, my computer time zone, just now updated. So now we have all the data available for these two companies. If we go to basic info tab, the tab after the input tab, we see the two companies, both of them are belonging to the same industry. That is how we search them in the first place. They're in distillers and wineries. The sector is consumer non-cyclical and both of them are US based companies. That is, they are listed in US exchange. In terms of market cap, we see that BFB has smaller market cap than STZ. Anything green here in this tool is desired. Would like to trade on higher market cap, larger companies, less speculative. So that is how the entire tool is colored. Green is desirable. STZ has higher market cap. At the same time for closing price, we prefer lower closing price because those move faster, tend to move faster. So for that, BFB is better. STC is quite high priced, $180 plus. Average volume is comparable around 300,000 plus day. Now for taking a trade, we would like to take a trade in long direction at least which has high short interest. So that short covering leads to higher move up. If we were going to take long, then we'll use BFB rather than STC in terms of this parameter. But now we are looking for short trade, so we can ignore this. And we can see STC has very high dividend yield, very high dividend yield. So it pays a dividend, it also earns money. It's it has EPS value, PFP doesn't have any dividend data, it doesn't have earnings as well. That is some basic information. Let's look at price performance now in terms of percentage gain or loss. Here we see that over one year period, STJ went up by 14% plus, whereas BFB didn't really go up much, 6%. Clearly, STC is stronger. What about fundamental information? In terms of fundamental, we are now looking at multiple criteria. Some of them are longer term like EPS growth and revenue growth for three and five years. And clearly STZ is better. Again, green color is better. STZ is better in terms of longer term performance. For medium term, we can look at operating margin ROE and ROA. STZ also has good operating margin, 32%, but BFP had higher operating margin and also better ROE and ROA. But we notice that STZ also has good operating margin ROE and ROA. For short term debt servicing, that is quick ratio and overall debt servicing, current ratio and debt equity. We see that BFP has better numbers than STC. Again, green is better. In terms of alpha, that is performance above market, STC is better. We saw that from price performance also across last one year. STC had better price performance than BFP. So alpha is better for STC. However, in terms of beta, that is how a stock moves relative to market, faster or slower, BFP is better. So we looked at different criteria, fundamentals, price, basic information, 
volume everything and you can see that one stock is better in certain respect and another stock is better on a different criteria and this is going to happen in any industry group that we analyze the challenge is to decide finally which one we are going to take as strong which one are we going to take as weak and we don't want to make it subjective if we make it subjective then one person right at this time is going to short stg another person is going to short bfp that's not going to work out in the long run we need to have a more systematic approach and that is where finally the scoring tool comes here the first few columns which are colored with blue shade in the header those are the ones we are going to look at for selecting strong or weak the ones with more green color is to be taken as strong fundamentally and the ones with more red color will be taken as weak so in this case we see that none of them are very strong not with lots of greens in this main scoring criteria but stz is clearly better it has more yellow and green and bap has more red in the key criteria what are the criteria ev by ebitda and pe both of them decide whether the stock is expensive or not so if we are going to look for long position we want a stock that has good fundamental but not expensive the good fundamental but not expensive is decided by these two parameters pbr may, may be used for financial institutions but now we are looking at distillers and vintners for that we can focus on ev ebitda and pe so fundamentally we can see that stc is stronger this comparison across these three parameters ev ebitda pe and pbr at among the peers that is the among the stocks listed on the left hand column a this scoring 1 and 2 is comparing only among the peer group whereas the first three parameters are comparing each of these stocks across the whole industry or market so it is not only among the peers that is why the numbers are not 1 or 2 but it is inside a range of 1 to 100 100 being the best and 1 being the worst but we just need to look at the color we can see that none of them are best meaning none of them actually have green color in any of these three criteria but overall stj has less red so again across the whole market stj is stronger fundamentally among the peers also only two companies in this case stj is stronger what are these three criteria one is earning reliability meaning if we have earnings data from quarter to quarter is it reliable how can it be reliable if the earnings is generated from standard operating margin then we can say it is more reliable but if it is coming from one time sale of assets for example then though the earnings may show up high on paper it is not reliable there may not be asset to sell every quarter all those factors are included in the earnings reliability score the internal value of the company is decided by forward projections of earnings cash flow etc applying a discounted cash flow model and then deriving a value of what is the internal value for that company and relative value compares the internal value of the company across many companies finally all we need to know is what is the score if it is 100 it is best and if it is 1 it is worst for the first three parameters which compares the stock across the market industry and among the peers the ranking is from 1 to the number of peers we are comparing so fundamentally we can see stc is stronger so if we had to short we would actually like to short bfb 
not STC. That is fundamentally speaking. That is not all right. We already looked at the charts and we saw in terms of chart, BFB doesn't have a good short potential. The stop loss is very far. So we are not going to short BFB anyway. If we have to short, then we just short STC. It is not strong also. Though between the two STC is strong, we can see in absolute terms on the first three columns, not many greens are there, actually no green. So it is also weak. Now let us have another way of doing the analysis. Suppose we knew only the company STZ.N and we didn't want to go to the industry app, then extract the data in Excel or filter it there and type it here, the symbols. But we could just know one company in the group, choose in the first cell that we are looking at industries, then enter the symbol here and enter how many PRs we want to retrieve. So we have one company we already know, we just type it there, stc.n, and let us keep our number 25. And we can see Q Vital is retrieving data, going to the universe that is icon and getting the data. And it has retrieved all these companies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven companies in this industry group. And it is showing us some information about the primary company that we are looking at, the company that we typed in. That is Constellation Brands. STC is the ticker. Next, EPS earnings date is 28 June. So that is more than one month away. So we are in safe period. We can take a trade without facing the immediate uncertainty of earnings. Stock price is 180. Average volume is 377,000 per day, which is fine. We can see over last five days compared to last 30 days, the activity has declined. It is 41%. Market cap is large enough. Alpha is higher than market is 19% higher and volatility is actually lower than market. It is a stable company. It has earnings and it also has a dividend yield. It belongs to distillers and wineries industry group. That's how we found it. Sector is consumer non cyclical and this company is in US. Now let us look at the peers that it brought. Remember in this case, it is bringing the peers automatically. It is just going to Thomson Reuters asking for all the peers for STZ up to 25 belonging to the industry. And this is extremely useful for global investors who like to invest in any country. So for example, if people are bullish on gold, it doesn't have to be only US based company. There are many gold mining companies based in Canada or Australia. Those could be having better fundamentals than US listed gold companies. Let's continue with the winers, the distillers and vintners now. We want to see which countries this company belong to. So that we can see from basic info. We see that some of the companies are in US now, but some of them are in Australia, Mexico, France. These are winemakers, so this can be in any country. Their market cap is listed, closing price, average volume, short interest, and dividend yield. So STZ has highest dividend yield here. Let's go to price performance. We are thinking of shorting what pattern we are looking here is actually something that was green on the right hand side and then turning red or yellow now for short. We will not like to take this company which was red already, already 97% down last one year. So probably the short opportunity has already passed us. Instead, we are looking for a company which was performing well earlier but now starting to go down, turning red on the left hand side. So this company based in France might be one. STC is not the best one in terms of price performance for short. 
let's look at fundamentals we see that the strongest probably is this company vco which is maximum green color in the row we just need to look at the green color we don't really need to look at the values so vco seems to be the strongest and stz is the second strongest the others are weak bfp is much weaker we already saw that and there are other companies also having more yellow red than green again there are some parameters where one stock is strong other parameters the same stock is weak so we just go to the scoring worksheet and we see stc is quite weak also in terms of score and vco is clearly the strongest so if we were bullish on distiller vintners we'll prefer to go long vco if we are going to take a short then this company dot ax is australia this company is like the best short opportunity if we are trading in us then we saw that stz is not strong and it has reasonable activity stop loss is not far away we have only the choice of shorting stc this is how we can quickly do fundamental analysis in less than five minutes i wanted to show you how we can do it for gold by the way before i go to gold there are some other useful features in this case we were comparing stc with the industry but we could do it across the sector and then you can see now more companies are fetched it is still retrieving data we should wait until this data retrieval is complete so that we have the accurate picture now we have found many more stocks broadening our search for the sector instead of looking only at the industry group if we go to the basic information we see it is finding many companies in america now and some in netherlands and the industry is not only distiller anymore it has brewer which is fine which is similar to distiller wineries but it has also got personal products that is procter and gamble it has also got tobacco that is oil known company again emo altria tobacco again renault's oil known company but there are several brewers also distillers wineries brewers so now if we want to see how stc stacks against the sector all we need to do actually just go to scoring so we may typically just go to input type the data what we want to compare either we enter our own list if we know those companies or just enter the one company we know and ask the tool to retrieve x number of peers and we may directly go to scoring which one is strongest here remember the key criteria is already there in the blue shaded columns so we can immediately see tsn is one of the strongest with maximum green color all the others are spotty this may be somewhat strong all we need to do is just look at the green color and we can see stc is in the middle somewhere not the worst not the best which one is the worst monster actually seems to be one of the worst monster is a well known company also mnst monster energy and this looks weak <laughs> so if that is so you know uh, we started with distillers and vintners but we found fundamentally monster is very weak if on the chart we see that it is giving a bearish signal maybe monster is a good shot that is how this tool can help us to identify unexpected opportunities so let's look at monster energy okay it is it is very bullish on chart it is at pendulum high again if the stretch signal is cyan it is at pendulum high it is overstretched in weekly also 
if it tilts down from this high maybe we could take a short trade there is no standard q trade setup right now so we will not take a trade again remember what i mentioned in case of broad market analysis we finally make money from price move not based on fundamentals not from market internals etc so we are not going to short monster energy unless there is a proper signal but when there is a proper signal in the short direction we will be very happy to short it because fundamentally it is one of the weakest in the whole sector so what we do we are not going to short it maybe day trade possible because there is a bearish shape candle it is at kind of resistance though so there is no watermark level maybe day trading but there is no swing trade short opportunity here so what we do we just add it to our watch list now if we go back to our tool the same comparison we could do across the country so again it is going to go to the universe and now trying to find peers of stz but not putting any restriction on industry and sector it has updated the data now we can see all the companies are in united states the sector is now consumer non-cyclical as well as consumer cyclical though very few and it has different industries now food processing there is appliance tobacco restaurants etc all we need to do again is just to go to the scoring directly and see which one is the strongest in this is maximum green color in this few key parameters so tsn seems to be one of the strongest interestingly starbucks is one of the weakest sbox is starbucks monster is also now one of the weakest and stz is in in between because we came across starbucks let's look at that also by the way monster and starbucks both belong to same category both are beverage companies and we show monster is fundamentally weak meaning maybe it is too high priced compared to the dividend earnings current value as well as forward projection etc what about starbucks chart it is similar to monster it has gone up it is overbought at pendulum high there is no swing short signal now monster chart was slightly weaker than starbucks so if we have a short opportunity maybe we will prefer to short monster than starbucks but we keep in view that starbucks is also fundamentally weak and sometimes this is contrary to what we may think because of the brand name of starbucks of course as a brand it is very strong but we can see based on data that fundamentally compared to the price it has it is actually not very strong that is how we can do the fundamental analysis using q vital in 5 minutes or less find the strongest in an industry group in a sector or in a whole country strongest for going long and weakest one for going short namul has a suggestion let's look at lumber liquidator let's compare it with the industry group so if it goes to the industry it has found few companies some of them in ua some in uk and one in thailand all we need to do is just go to scoring if we are going to trade only in us just click on us so we have three companies ll home depot and lowes let me ask you remember to see only at the key columns that is the blue shaded columns they are shaded in different color the first three is comparing across the whole market industry etc the last three is comparing across the peer groups the stocks that we have provided here so looking at this which one looks strongest and which one looks weakest can you type in the q and a panel your answer
just need to look at the six column the one with maximum green is strongest the one with maximum red is weakest so which one is weakest here lumbar liquidator we have to say is weakest because it doesn't have data enough the ones we have data for it is weakest 92 low has at least some green in terms of earnings reliability home depot also has that and it has data to calculate all the others pbr is important for financial companies this is not a financial company so we can look at only the first five columns just looking at color coding instantly we know fundamentally at least ll is weakest which one is strongest home depot is strongest among these three and low is in the middle again for trading we have to look at the chart so let's look at these three companies using q charts number liquidator you see it is weak fundamentally but it has gone up a lot those are the companies which are going to give the best short opportunities remember again we are not going to short it unless there is a proper signal because finally we can make money only from the price move knowing the fundamental gives us opportunities great opportunities to catch a company which is actually weak relative to price but at very high price now like pendulum high right now so lumbar liquidator is looking like that very high moving sideways for a few days overbought in weekly it is overbought last week ended with a bearish shape candle if it starts falling down gives us a proper trade setup it may be very profitable trade. low had bad earnings and it dropped a lot we saw in industry analysis this led to the decline of the home improvement retailer group before that it already displayed a bearish headwind it was moving in narrow range it came down and then on this day we had a very easy go with flow short trade opportunity that was just before earnings we will not be shorting the stock but we could have traded that using short call vertical that would be very profitable trade by the way i see some people presenting how to trade and then they show this big decline and explain how profitable this short trade would be i am careful not to do that because that will be akin to gambling we always need to look at the earnings date and if it is earnings we cannot claim that we are going to short it using stock on this day however looking at industry if it is weak looking at fundamental it is not very strong when this go with flow short signal comes we could easily trade it using short call vertical that is an allowed trade before earning that trade will be extremely profitable let's look at home depot home depot is actually giving us a go with flow short trade opportunity right now at the right edge the weekly chart backdrop color is magenta bearish it is already in downtrend in daily chart lower high and lower low it has flow candle color magenta if we took a short now our profit target will be somewhere around the support memory stock will be just above recent high so it is not the best but acceptable reward risk ratio if somebody had already entered the trade on friday that is optimal in superior profit way if we are able to run sonar that is the programs we have to find trade opportunities then friday just before market close us market closes at 4 pm est we could run sonar at 3 30 or 3 45 just need five minutes or so to identify trade opportunities and press the short trade that will be a low risk short trade based on fundamental technical and industry analysis now if we are going to short only the weakest fundamental company that also we can do but as i mentioned for short term trading we don't need to look at fundamental so much so home depot is a valid swing short trade though it is the strongest among the three companies let me take a moment to go and expand the selection of stocks from industry to sector now it is able to bring many more companies 
wait for the status to show that it has updated all the data go to scoring remove the filter now see which one is strongest we can instantly know bbby that is row 23 if we know the company it is fine it is bed bath and beyond but if we don't know we can go to basic information and bbby is bed bath and beyond this is actually the strongest sometimes it is contrary to what we believe because of the brand name of the company bbby brand name is strong but maybe not as strong as starbucks so it is actually the strongest fundamentally immediately we can see and interestingly costco a very well-known company very well-known brand robust company i'm a regular customer of costco love the company but fundamentally we can see immediately it is not strong remember it is relative to price everything is relative maybe costco is very strong in some way like earnings reliability is extremely good operating margin is not much but that is expected it is kind of discount retailer very high quality products in my view so margin low is fine because its revenue is very large earnings quality is high but we can immediately see relative to its current stock price it is not attractive whereas bbby may be having a weaker brand than costco but the strongest dick sporting is also strong dks wsm what is wsm that is row 25 it is william sonoma it's a home furnishing retailer that is also quite strong in this way we can quickly do fundamental analysis visually and use it for longer term investing if we are shorting home depot there is a question from david what will be the stop let's go back to the chart stop for us will be just above the recent high stop will be somewhere here if we want the exact top value then we could switch to the hop off template in the hop off template the stop level is decided objectively using the stocks volatility and now we can see the stop will be at 156.86 it is displayed here it is actually at the cyan series of dots cyan series of dots there's the q protection signal is to be used for short top or for short protect profit and when it was going up and will be used the magenta dots for long stop and you will see how beautifully again it lets the stock move up but doesn't get whipsawed we could catch the long move for a long time and see there was an earnings on this day if we had taken a long position somewhere here we'll be exiting the trade just before earnings on this yellow indices of candle so at the right hand side we'll take a short go it flow short if we do that, we will put the stop at 156.9. If you are interested, let's look at gold for one minute. We saw earlier that GLD is going up. Already it has gone up. But if we look at gold mining companies, like ABX, it's a large gold mining company, it has not gone up yet. So maybe if these gold mining companies go up, will be able to catch them at a low price if so and if it is for longer term we would like to we'd like to enter the trade in a stock which is strongest here i would like to compare in the industry try abx the gold mining company get all its peers and see which one is strongest as global investor now we see it has fetched companies in different countries us canada south africa also has good mining companies and uk which one is strongest all we need to do is go to scoring which one is strongest it almost immediately comes up this one is strongest maximum green color and this one is the weakest fnv fnv is in us and the strongest company is in south africa now if we don't have brokerage account in south africa then we may look for other companies in countries where we can trade 
if we are able to trade only in us then for that we have provided the filter is select the companies in us and now we can see abx is actually the strongest and newmont also abx and newmont but abx is stronger because it has green on pe score also so instantly we see if we are trading in us abx is actually strongest fundamentally and it is fine if not everything is green because if everything is green the price will be very very high we are not going to catch it at that price our aim is to catch the stock when it goes down now let us see apple it is very highly priced now remove the filter apple relative to its price is not that strong as hp right now contrary to what we might think relative to its price hp is more attractive stx i think seagate is also attractive netap is also attractive having this visual tool helps us to make objective decision very fast and you might do a lot of analysis over weeks and months i'm quite confident you will come to the same conclusion yes it's a great tool it's a great tool thanks so that is all that i wanted to cover in today's session i look forward to you join our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably